Howdy. Very briefly, I want to look at Wheelock chapter 7, third declension nouns. There's nothing really challenging to the brain in this chapter other than using up memory cells. So that there are no, there are no really radical concepts or, ooh, wow, that just blew my world. There's nothing like that really in this chapter. It's just a matter of a different group of nouns than we've had before. We've had two groups of nouns thus far. Um, remember my kind of joke, if you've watched any of these, that the Romans got all the nouns together one day and they divided them up into five groups. The first group, the second group, the third group, the fourth group, and the fifth group. The fourth and the fifth group, by the way, are pretty small. What, what we're about to see is, uh, to me, the, you know, the really big one in my mind is the third, uh, the third group. And um, probably, for me, the most interesting nouns are in the third group but maybe I'm just weird. I think most people would say I am. But uh, anyway, so we've already had two groups, two declensions, they're called. Uh, why? I don't know why. Uh, well, I probably do, but that's not important right now. Okay, so the first declension is the A group. All women get A's. Uh, and so the, the uh, first declension is a group of, of almost all feminine nouns that have A's mostly, uh, in their in their endings and they're kind of on their way to the endings. Uh, and then there are a few exceptions: the pain words, uh, poeta, poet, agricola, farmer, incola, inhabitant, nauta, sailor. Those all look feminine, but they're actually masculine. So the adjectives that that go with those words will be have masculine endings. Um, that's the first declension, mostly feminine. The second declension have O's and U's mostly uh, in their endings. Uh, they are mostly masculine, ending in us, like amicus, uh, but there are some neuter uh, words also, a large neuter minority in the second group, second declension. The um words like donum um, would be neuter. Um, those, that's where we've been. That's the past, looking back. Uh, first group, the A group, mostly feminine. The uh, second group, the second declension, uh, mostly masculine, although a significant number of neuter words, um, the O's and U's. And now, ladies and gentlemen, well, okay, I'm going to stall a little longer. Uh, here is the actual. Here are the actual endings. Remember the good old days of the first and second declension. So the first declension is on the right. Uh, the second declension is on the left. Just trying to be weird. Uh, but anyway, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, vocative. Uh, so amicus, amiki, amico. Amicum, amico, amica, those are the singulars of, of, of a typical second declension masculine. And they're the plurals. And then the feminines uh, of the first declension, puella, puellae, puellae, puellam, puella, puella. Um, uh, these here are the uh, first declension feminines and the second declension masculines. That was, that was the good old days. Remember them? It was just last week. Now enter the third declension. I'm going to call the third declension the jack-in-the-box declension. Why? Because there are some letters that just seem to just jump out of nowhere. Uh, so, wirtus, okay, there's a U.S., could be familiar, I don't know. It's wirtus in the nominative, but... Out pop some letters in the genitive. So in the genitive and in all the other forms, you're going to get some letters uh, that will pop out typically in the third declension. So uh, virtutis is the genitive. Virtus is the nominative singular. Virtutis uh, is the genitive singular. Where did that extra T come from? I want my money back. There's no T here. Where did the T come from? I'm sorry. That's just the way the third declension is. In the third declension, you're often going to get an extra letter. There's only one extra letter here, but you're going to usually get um, more letters in all of the forms except the nominative. This is, by the way, uh, the reason why most Latin uh, uh, textbooks will uh, they'll give you one form for the, the when they're introducing a new vocabulary word. You'll have the nominative singular, and then you'll have the genitive singular. Then it'll tell you the gender, and then it'll tell you the definition. So for usually four bits of information in your typical Latin vocabulary list um, for a new word. Now, you might have thought with the first and second declension, why are they telling me the genitive? Why are they telling me the gender? I already know what the genitive looks like. I already know what the, the, the gender is. Well, that's because in the first and second declension, 
the form of the genitive is, is more or less predictable, and the gender is more or less predictable. There are exceptions, if we, as we've seen, like the pain words, but most of the time you can, you can guess at the gender. Now, the problem is, in the third declension, you cannot necessarily, uh, most of the time, you're not going to be able to, to guess the gender. You're just going to have to memorize it. And similarly, you're not going to be able to predict exactly what the genitive and all the other forms are. Actually, it's the nominative that is the weirdo. The nominative is the one that tends to be different. Uh, all the other forms tend to have the extra letters, uh, if there are any. And you'll, this will all make sense when I get into the actual examples in the rest of this uh, video. Uh, but um, So uh, you need to memorize the genitive singular uh, of a third declension word so that you know what it looks like in most of its forms. You have to learn the nominative singular because that's the dictionary form that you look up. You, you have to memorize the gender because you wouldn't have had, been able to guess it otherwise. And then, of course, you need to know the definition. So um, the, the, the key to the third declension, or sometimes you might call it the consonant declension, uh, at least that's what we always did in Greek, but uh, you're going to have extra letters that are going to come into play in all the forms except for the nominative. Okay, that, that, what, I, what I'm telling you is mostly true. Okay, so let's, let's go on. So here's, here's an example of a third declension noun. So rex uh, means uh, king. Uh, Oedipus rex, ever read that in school? Tyrannosaurus rex, the, uh, the, the dinosaur king, so to speak. speak. Um, so rex, rex is the nominative singular form of, of king. But look at the genitive. Regus. Where did the G come from? What's up with that? Uh, now, I could tell you some things, but I'm not going to. Um, you'll notice that if you go into the actual forms of it, the G shows up in every form except for the nominative singular. Okay, I'll tell you. The nominative singular a lot of times just adds an S. So, when you add an S to a G, regs, regs, rex, 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 I mean, you say it a million times fast and you get tired of writing two letters and you just put an X. Um, but uh, the G, the reason why you need to learn the genitive form is because the G is really, actually the, the genitive form is more important than the nominative because look at how many, look, the G shows up everywhere else. Now, uh, it's masculine, how would you have known that? You know, you could have, you know, looked at the word rakes for a long, long time and not had any clue what gender it was. Of course, knowing that it means king helps because if it was queen, you know, it would be different. But, um, a regina, you know, with an A, nice first declension word. Um, but anyway, so regus is the genitive. So is is the typical genitive singular ending for a third declension noun. I'm sorry, you're just going to have to make a little extra space in your brain, carve out a little extra space to memorize a little bit more. So the dative is regi, regi, regi. Um, I'm sorry, that, that I is frustrating because wait a minute, for the second declension, I learned a long I was a nominative plural, and I learned for the second declension that a long I was a genitive singular. Now you're telling me that there's some words where a long I is a dative singular? Who made up this this language? I'm sorry. It's just just deal with it. You know, take some pills. Um, but um, it's a, so so knowing that this is a third declension noun is important. Knowing that this is a third declension noun rather than a second declension noun is going to be key to knowing that that's a dative singular. Of course, context always helps. Regem, you know, the, the M thing? Okay, somewhere in my subconscious I remember that the, well, let's, let's go back. The, the accusative singular for the second declension was U-M, and then they're Methodists, and then the, the accusative singular for the first declension is A-M, uh, because girls get up early, um, so having an E-M for the third declension, it's got an M. I'll take what I can get. Um, Rege, Rege, uh, that E is going to be very frustrating, you know, to you, uh, no, do no doubt. Um, and I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm trying to think of a way to help you. I think, isn't, isn't the, the Reformation motto, sola fide, isn't that with an E, isn't that a... Um, isn't that an ablative singular, by faith alone? And the by comes out of the fact that it's ablative. I don't know. If it helps, use it. Uh, regais is nominative plural. Regais is also accusative plural. So context is going to have to tell you whether the ace is nominative or accusative. Uh, regum. Oh, come on. Who came up with this? That looks like a second declension accusative singular. Did you have to make it hard? Um, yes, they did. Uh, and so um 
is a uh, genitive plural in the third declension. I'm sorry, it just is. And so you need to know that this word, re, re, regus, you know, the rakes, you need to know that this word is third declension so you know that the um is actually uh, a genitive plural and not an accusative singular of a second declension word like amicus. I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it's, it's ah, let's go back in time and kill somebody. Okay, so regibus, regibus, um, okay, at least there um, it's something different. Ibis, uh, it's a, a dative singular and an ablative singular are going to have an ibis on it. Now, where you can maybe latch on to something you've learned before, you, you might remember that in an earlier chapter of Wheelock, the, the dative and ablative plural of daughter, uh, philia, philia um, the, remember that the dative plural form was filiabus, um, uh, so, if that helps you at all, the ibis there um, is is dative plural and ablative plural for the third declension. Vocative, uh, Wheelock's going to stop giving you the vocative because from now on uh, the uh, vocative will always look the same as the nominative. So he's just tired. He's just tired of giving you the vocative. Okay, he will not give you the vocative anymore. So, welcome to the third declension. Um, do not commit suicide. You'll you'll remember this soon enough. Uh, but uh, there are some irritating things about this. The the um, uh, the fact that this long I there is dative is irritating. You know the fact that this um is gender plural is irritating. Um, but uh, so you know, take a little time uh, to memorize that, and eventually you'll get over it. Okay. Well, let's look at another example. Amo, man. Um, uh, the human species is called Homo sapiens, which means wise guy. Uh, homo, man, sapiens, wise, thinking, thinking man, um, you might say, thinking person. I don't think homo is distinctively male. Um, but look at the form here. Homo, hominis, masculine, and it means a person or a man. Uh, what is man that you're mindful of him? Um, notice again that some letters, in this case an I-N, pop out. So Jack in the Box. da 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 and then out pop some letters, in this case an I-N. So homo is the nominative singular, but all of the other forms, look at all these other forms, all of the other forms have the homin. So the genitive singular is hominis. Um, uh, you might have some hominy for supper. Um, dative, again, irritating dative singular. Hominem is accusative singular. Now this might help you remember this ending. An ad hominem argument is an argument uh, is a, 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 the ad hom the ad hominem fallacy is where instead of attacking a person's argument you attack the person so you say um, well Ken said that um, roses are red yeah yeah but that's Ken he's stupid uh, now that doesn't actually make an argument about whether roses are red it makes an argument about Ken Ken may be stupid he probably is uh, but uh, that that is irrelevant as to whether roses are red. So an ad hominem argument is against the man as opposed to against the argument. So if that helps you remember that homonym uh, is the accusative form, uh, more power to you. Uh, homine then would be the ablative singular by a man. Homines uh, would be um, the nominative plural and also the um, accusative plural because ace is the place for the helpful hard man, where man and it's also uh, the the nominative and accusative plural of a third declension noun. Hominum uh, is genitive plural of men. Hominib hominibus um, is the dative plural and the ablative plural. If you've sung choir, uh, see how does it go? Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax. I'm singing the bass line. Pax hominibus bone voluntatis. I'm sorry, that's the base. But hominibus, two men, two men of goodwill. Um, so if that helps you remember that that's the date of plural, more power to you. Um, there are, uh, this particular form, homo hominis, I just, I've memorized it as ma masculine. You know, it means man or person, so that, that makes sense. But there are some other forms. Uh, for example, you, you cannot always predict the gender of a third declension noun. Most of the time you can't. But there are some, like take, take nouns, third declension nouns that end in or at the bottom here. Uh, so take amor, which means love. 
amor. The genitive is amoris. So or is the nominative, oris is the genitive. Nouns, third declension nouns that end in or and then have a genitive in oris are masculine. So amor, uh, amor is uh, masculine. Um, anyway, okay, so there are some uh, uh, times when you can tell what gender a third declension noun is. Let's move on to the next example, virtus. Virtue is feminine. We would expect virtue to be feminine, wouldn't we? Because certainly virtue couldn't be male. But anyway, um, this was an earlier uh, example, but the T pops out. Virtus is the nominative. Virtutus, and um, that should be a long U, sorry, uh, is the genitive singular. It's feminine, and it means merit. Now, of course, you might be tempted to translate it as uh, virtue. However, my Latin teachers told me that if at all possible, you should try to find a, a word in the, for the English translation that doesn't look like the Latin word. Um, because it's too tempting to infect the Latin word with um, what the English word means. And the, the, the range of meanings for a, um, a word in one language isn't always the same as the range of meanings uh, for a word in another language. So um, you can see that Wheelock's gone with merit instead of virtue, although you can translate it virtue if you want. But again, same pattern. Nominative and vocative, virtus, genitive, virtutus, virtuti, virtutem, we're to te, and there's the singulars. We're to taste is the uh, nominative and accusative plural. We're to tum, the genitive plural. We're to tibus is the uh, dative and ablative plural, and we're done. Uh, so anyway, uh, virtue. Um, there are also words that end in tas, tudo, and tio uh, that are feminine. So you so a virtus, virtutis kind of pattern is probably a feminine abstract noun. Uh, same things with uh, tas, veritas, truth. Um, veritus, veritatis. Uh, that's going to be feminine. Um, a, a noun that ends in tudo and the genitive tudinus. Um, let's see, what's an example? Um, pulchritudo, beauty. Pulchritudinus. Um, uh, tio is going to also be feminine. So ratio, reason. Rationis. Uh, of reason, um, these uh, if you if you were to do a random search of university uh, mottos in Latin, uh, you would probably find uh, a, a high representation of these third declension abstract nouns: uh, ratio, reason, how noble, and of course most of them are feminine. Um, so, virtus is a feminine uh, sec, uh, third declension noun. Now, let's look uh, just to bring it on down. Let's look at a neuter. Uh, there are certain neuter third declension uh, nouns. So corpus, body, is an example. And I have some others at the bottom. Uh, so so C, mare, uh, is a neuter form, ending in E. Animal, uh, ending in AL, is a neuter form. Exemplar uh, is a neuter form. So uh, the genitives of these would be mare, nominative singular, maris. Animal, nominative singular, animalis. Exemplar, nominative singular, exemplaris for the genitive. Um, also, um, uh, third declension nouns that end in men tend to be neuter. So, nomen, name, nomenis, genitive singular. Well, let's see how it looks with corpus. Now, one thing to remember is the no there are no exceptions to this. The nominative and accusative of a neuter word always look the same. So, we have corpus, and then the accusative is corpus. Uh, and also the neuter plural has an A uh, in the nominative and accusative. So corpora uh, and corpora are both uh, neuter plural there. So corpus, corporis, corpori, corpus, corpore, uh, corpora, corpora, corporum, uh, corporibus, corpora, corporibus. And so those, again, same endings in most cases, is, e, e, Long, uh, the neuter plural a, um, ibis, ibis, and then the nominative and accusative look the same. Um, now, uh, uh, the, there, again, we get we, we should begin to get some uh, derivatives that you would know from law school or from common language. So the the corpus delecti is the uh, the body uh, that is desired. Uh, there's the uh, habeas corpus. Um, let let you have a body of evidence. 
um, Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. Um, so, uh, corporal punishment, bodily punishment. Um, you know, if I were a good teacher, you know, there'd be all kinds of stuff I would be telling you uh, that we use in, in high flute in English um, that's based upon Latin. I think we're pretty close to the end here. In fact, we are very close to the end. So let me thank you for sticking with me through this uh, rather long video on the third declension. It's, it's not hard. It's just more brain cells. So thank you.